Yes, it's that time of the year again, fellas. It is time to let you know my ultimate top 20 perfume parlor fragrances that I've been wearing all year round and the ones that I believe you should definitely uh, get your nose on in 2023. There's a, a few new ones that have made it into this year's top 20 and have nudged out some of last year's entries uh, But then there's also a few that have continued to be my mainstay go-to scents over the past 12 months uh, So they remain in uh, this year's list of favorites So strap yourself in and make yourself comfortable because it is going to be a mammoth one this year And also it might be an idea to hand over your bank card to a responsible adult whilst watching this countdown Because you are definitely going to be uh, tempted into picking up some if not all 20 of these bad boys welcome to mags frags Yes, hello again everybody and welcome to this annual top 20 perfume parlor fragrances video of 2023. My name's Paul and without doubt the question I get asked the most in the comments section is what my top three favorite perfume parlor fragrances are and the only answer that I can ever give to that is it's absolutely impossible to answer uh, because there's just so many that I uh, enjoy equally and uh, even compiling this top 20 list means that I've got to leave out loads that I really love wearing uh, but I have finally whittled them down and I think uh, this year's top 20 is the strongest countdown that I've produced so far. I think it's uh, probably a bit unfair to rank these from uh, 20 to number one because they're all as good as each other and they're all really good in their own right so this year's list is uh, in no order of preference whatsoever. And before I begin today's rundown, if you are interested in picking up any of the fragrances that feature in today's video to try out for yourself, you can use my unique discount code to get yourself 10% off your first order, which I'll leave a, a link to down in the description. The link will direct you to a login page and you will be asked to create a login name and a password But once you've logged in and you've made your purchases uh, your discount will automatically be applied at the checkout And as always guys just a quick disclaimer I don't work for the perfume parlor and this video is in no way sponsored by them uh, So these opinions that you're about to hear today are my own opinions and I did buy all of these bottles with my own money I do however receive a small commission for recommending you to their website so just by clicking on the link and setting up an account you'll save you 10% whilst uh, supporting the channel and helping me to bring you some more free content in the future. Okay so the first one that I'd highly recommend goes by the name of Agent and the perfume parlor code on this one is 0011. This one is a copy of Thierry Mugler's Amen Pure Havan, uh, which is now discontinued and has become really difficult to get hold of unless you're prepared to pay a small fortune for it on eBay. Luckily I still have a bottle of the original but this perfume parlor extract spray is extremely accurate uh, to the original and it has really great performance. It's a, a rich, warm, sweet honey tobacco fragrance and some people can also pick up on like a, a cherry accord even though cherry is not listed in the uh, official note breakdown. To me it was always uh, one of the most underrated designer fragrances because it smelled really expensive and more like a high quality niche uh, fragrance rather than uh, a designer scent and it's an absolute compliment beast. It's sexy, masculine and addictive and pretty much the perfect autumn and winter fragrance. If you haven't already uh, tried this one yet, put it at the uh, very top of your next shopping list. It's uh, a real banger. Okay, next up is one that I've only fairly recently discovered and I don't actually own a full bottle of the original uh, But I did manage to get my hands on a sample from someone in the community So I could compare this perfume parlor version to it and I've got to say that this is a very accurate copy This is called Jupiter and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1423 this one is inspired by Ganymede by Marc Antoine Barrois, uh, which is uh, a woody, leathery fragrance uh, with also some metallic smelling mineral notes in there that run through the scent. It's one of the slightly more challenging fragrances on this year's list and there's uh, many layers of complexity to it but some people refer to it as smelling like the pages of a, a glossy magazine and whenever I smell it I do have to agree that uh, it's a really good description of uh, the basic overall aroma that you get from this one. 
It opens up crisp and bright with uh, a mild mandarin orange and a dry pencil shavings type woodiness. And as it dries down, you get more of the leather, which sweetens it up a touch. Uh, so you get more of like an oud type aroma in the background. Uh, but it's the mineral notes that steal the show in this one. And it's what brings its unique and dynamic character. Uh, and it's just uh, one that's quite different to anything else that I've got in my collection. It's a very versatile fragrance that you can wear all year round and it smells clean and classy But funnily enough, it wasn't really a love at first sniff for me And it, I've had to wear it kind of a few times before I've been able to really fully appreciate it However, the more I've worn it, the more it really grows on me And it's also got me loads of compliments, so it's obviously smelling really good in the air it projects really well uh, and again definitely want to get your nose on in 2023 if you haven't already tried this one it is a, a really interesting scent okay so the third one on today's list goes by the name of the crown and the perfume parlor code on this one is 0996 this one is a copy of The Chronic from Byron Parfums, which is a warm, spicy, ambery fragrance. So again, perfect for the colder months of the year or the festive season. It opens up with pepper and cinnamon, sitting on a combination of rich, warm amber and leather notes. And there's also a dusty and slightly animalic muskiness in the background uh, from the white musk and the patchouli and also the sandalwood. Uh, but it's the amber that stands out for me the most in this one. And overall, this is a sweet but not overly sweet scent with a, a bit of a spicy kick to it. It smells expensive with a definite niche quality, uh, but I wouldn't say there's anything too challenging or complex in this one. And it's one that I'd recommend to anyone who's looking at getting into like niche fragrances for the first time, but doesn't want anything too funky. The performance is really good and it's a very long lasting scent with a decent projection for the first couple of hours uh, But you'll still get a mi uh, like mild pleasing wash from it at least five or six hours uh, into the uh, life of the fragrance It's not the best performer on the list, but it's no slouch either And this is what I'd describe as uh, just a really solid all-round winter scent Right, so this next one is actually one of the perfume parlors by Fusion Creations where they uh, fuse two popular fragrances together. And this is uh, my favorite one of the bunch. It's uh, called Blue Card and the perfume parlor code on this one is 0745. It's uh, a mix of uh, the Baccarat Rouge 540 scent DNA and also Creed's Virgin Island Water and it actually smells really good and the two fragrances just really complement each other extremely well. Early on I'd say you get slightly more of the Virgin Island water with the bright watery tropical fruits and the coconut forcing their way to the front. Uh, but as it gets into the dry down you will start to pick up on the saffron note which is one of the most prominent notes in Baccarat Rouge. Uh, but this is neither a copy of Baccarat Rouge or Virgin Island water so uh, you are only going to get fleeting reminders of each parent fragrance. It's a unique and interesting scent in its own right and much cheaper than layering the two fragrances together which would cost you about 500 quid if you were to buy both the original bottles and just layer them. Uh, but what you get from this one is a really fresh aquatic scent for the most part with a sunny energizing character uh, so it is better suited to the spring and the summer months or maybe to wear as like a gym fragrance. It projects really well for a couple of hours, uh, but it's not the longest lasting scent, uh, so you may need to reapply it if you want to get a full day's wear out of it. But overall, a surprisingly nice little discovery, and one to uh, definitely pick up and uh, test out for yourself. Uh, and it also, if you pick it up now, it will be just nicely macerated in time for the summertime. Okay, so the next one that I'm going to talk about today goes by the name of Card Wonder, and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1940. This is a copy of Ombre Nomade from Louis Vuitton and boy does this stuff know how to fill a room. Uh, I wore it one day to work and I didn't even go heavy on the sprays but literally everybody who came into the area that I was working in commented on it saying things like the whole room smelled like a fragrance counter in a, a department store so it was pretty embarrassing at the time to be honest so I would say just one or two sprays maximum of this is all you're ever going to need if you plan to wear it indoors. 
This is a fairly complex and challenging scent that might not be loved by everybody, especially if you've only ever worn designer fragrances in the past. It's a bold and resinous scent with a blend of sweet, floral and woody notes. It opens up with a tart raspberry note blending with the sweet oud and the rose note, uh, which is actually very pleasant right from the initial spray, with not much of a, an alcohol blast in this one actually, so you can actually pick up on the opening notes right, from the, right off the bat. The raspberry note mixed with the sweet and woody notes make you think of Tuscan leather in the opening and I definitely get a similarity but it's not exactly the same when you test them side by side. As it dries down I can definitely pick up on the saffron and the incense which brings a bit of a smoky animalic accord to the background of the composition but to me this is a, a rose and oud dominant scent with a, a bit of fruitiness in there also and you get like a luxurious Middle Eastern quality with like a mysterious dark velvety uh, texture in the background. It's super accurate to the original Ombre Nomad and it's a, a real beast of a scent and like I say it might not be for everyone uh, but it's one that I would definitely recommend that you experience uh, if you haven't already got your nose on it. Okay so my sixth recommendation is called Rum Carly and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1942. This is a copy of Hal Fetty from Penhaligons which is probably the most popular and well known fragrance in the whole Penhaligons lineup. However I also equally enjoy this one called Tahir uh, and the code on this is 0325 which is a copy of Cairo also from Penhaligons and I was kind of torn between the two as to which to include in this top 20 list but the Hal Fetty copy edged it out slightly because it's possibly a touch more versatile and mass appealing in my opinion. It's got a carnival of accords which centred around the note of leather uh, but it's way more complex than just describing it as a leather fragrance. There's Bulgarian rose which adds a, a bit of velvety floral uh, accent to it and notes like saffron and cardamom bring the spice. There's even some green notes of cypress leaf and artemisia up top and in the base there's oud, leather, amber, tonka beans, vanilla and musk so just about everything you can blend really but the overall smell is uh, really addictive and high class. It smells amazing in the air and that's uh, why Penhaligons use it as the uh, ventilation system in their shops just to attract passing customers. This perfume parlor version actually lasts a little bit longer than the original and uh, it's uh, extremely close in terms of its scent accuracy. I'm sure a high percentage of you'll know all about this one but if you just started to get into your fragrance journey then this is a, a must of a pickup uh, and it's definitely one to add to your next perfume parlor order. I would say that Alfetti is uh, classed as an all time classic. Okay next up we've got a relatively new one that goes by the name of Envoy and the perfume parlor code on this one is 0623. This is inspired by Ambassador by Swiss brand Gisada and the original of this one was one of the highlights uh, for me last year when I first got my nose on it. It's a fabulous smelling fragrance with a stunningly fruity opening with mango and mandarin orange taking centre stage. But there's also a classy masculinity to it in the background that's definitely going to uh, remind you a little bit of Dior Sauvage and you are going to get that Sauvage kind of vibe but to my nose this is actually better and the mango is ridiculously addictive. It's super versatile and you can wear it all year round, day or night, dressed up or casually. And although I don't think this perfume parlor version is quite there in terms of accuracy, it does capture the overall essence of Ambassador and it does smell extremely good. This is totally mass appealing and a really safe blind buy for anyone who just wants to smell fantastic on a budget. Definitely one to uh, try out for yourself in 2023. Right, so the eighth one to make it into this year's top 20 is called Money Flow and the perfume palette card on this one is 0437. This one is a copy of Moola Moola from Byron Parfums which is a unisex gourmand fragrance with opening notes of strawberry, raspberry, peach and caramel producing a deliciously sweet fruity introduction uh, that may lean a touch feminine to some of you guys out there but I absolutely love how this one smells right off the bat. <laughs> 
But as it dries down, you do get some earthy and spicy notes, including patchouli, labdanum, agar wood, ginger and pepper. And when everything comes together, it's just a, a really gorgeous aroma that has a casual, playful youthfulness about it. Uh, so it's more of an everyday scent, in my opinion. But you could also wear it as a date night scent because it does have a warm and comforting and mellow feel to it that kind of makes you want to uh, keep going in for another sniff. It retains its uh, sweet fruitiness all the way through and never really becomes what I'd describe as a masculine fragrance, uh, but it's just a really pleasant and likeable scent that I think most people will really enjoy. Okay, so up next is one that is definitely not what I'd describe as a unisex fragrance, and this is about as masculine as it gets in my opinion. This is called uh, Rosy Smoke, and the perfume parlor code on this one is 0151. This is a copy of Red Tobacco from Mansera, which I've spoken about a couple of times on the channel, including a full review of the original and also a clone that I picked up from the KDJ inspired website. But up until recently, I hadn't actually tried this perfume parlor copy, so I thought I'd give it a go and just see how it compared to the ones that I've already got. And I'm pleased to say that even this standard EDP spray is absolutely spot on in terms of its uh, scent accuracy. It smells pretty much identical to the original and it also performs brilliantly too. Red Tobacco, however, is not a fragrance that I would casually just recommend to anybody as like a blind buy because it is a, a complex scent, especially in the opening, uh, that will challenge your senses. Um, it's one that I hated when I first smelled it, but uh, for some reason it's just really grown on me over time and now it's one of my favourite cold weather fragrances. It's dark, dense, sweet and smoky, uh, with also like a bit of a waxy kind of texture to the overall aroma. However, give it 30 minutes or so to settle down properly and it transforms into a stunningly elegant and sexy smelling scent, uh, which is a huge compliment puller uh, once the cinnamon and the apple and sweet vanilla come through and you end up with a lovely warm spicy scent profile. This perfume parlor version replicates all the accents of the original, uh, but at a tenth of the price. So I'd highly recommend that you uh, pick up a bottle of this before splashing out £120 on a bottle of the original. Okay, so we're halfway through the list now, and the tenth one that I'm going to talk about today uh, goes by the name of Sensible Elixir, and the perfume parlor code on this is 1481. This is a copy of the Masculine Monster, also known as Savage Elixir. And this perfume parlor copy has made it into uh, this year's top 20 list, simply because of its accuracy to the original and the performance, rather than being like based solely on how it smells. I really like Savage Elixir, but I don't love it. And I find the licorice note to be a little bit relentless. And it does start to annoy me after it's pounded my nostrils for over 10 hours. But like I say, I've included it in this year's countdown because it's such an accurate, high quality representation of the original. If you haven't yet sampled Savage Elixir, it's basically a darker, more mature and more niche smelling version of the original Dior Savage EDT. It's more resinous with notes like licorice, vetiver and patchouli just being amped up and produced. Uh, it produces like a much dirtier and slightly more challenging scent profile. The licorice is definitely what I pick up on the most though, uh, but there's also a bit of a spicy kick from the cinnamon and the cardamom, uh, and I would say that it's definitely got more of a, a bad boy attitude to it. This perfume parlor version is a monster and it smells virtually identical in the air to the original and you'll get a full day's, a full day's wear out of it no problem and it's a, a bit of a room filling fragrance in terms of its projection so if you do enjoy the elixir DNA then I would say that this is a bit of a no brainer of a pick up and uh, you simply can't go wrong with this one. Okay next up we have one called Greek Island and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1950. This is a copy of Naxos from Zerzhov, which is a lovely, rich, warm and smooth fragrance with tobacco, honey, vanilla and tonka bean, producing a caramel-like sweetness. But there's also lots of fresh lavender, lemon and bergamot up top, which brings an airy Mediterranean breeziness to it, so it never gets too dark or sickly sweet. And it's one that you could wear even in warmer temperatures during the springtime. It's a really interesting fragrance with a perfect juxtaposition of freshness and sweetness. And again, this perfume parlor version does a brilliant job at replicating the Naxos scent DNA. And nobody will ever know that you aren't wearing the original when they smell this in the air as you're walking past them. 
The performance is really good with a very strong projection for the first couple of hours. And then it's more of a pleasant, comforting skin scent with a, an arm's length projection for the next six or seven hours. It's a really classy, versatile and easy to wear fragrance and one that I would uh, highly recommend that you try out for yourself. Okay, so we're flying through now and the 12th one that I'm going to talk about in today's list is called Second Reaction and the perfume parlor code on this one is 0360. This is a clone of uh, Side Effect from Initio Parfums, which is my absolute favourite one from the whole Initio Parfums collection, and it's an absolute dream of a fragrance in the fall and winter. I've actually just ordered a bottle of the original from the Essential website because it was on offer with a 20% discount, so it was uh, too good to miss because you don't usually uh, find this with a, a discount anywhere. It smells super rich and luxurious with a beautiful, warm and cosy feel to it. We've got oodles of sweetness coming from the vanilla and the tobacco. And there's also a gorgeous boozy rum note in there. And this is just topped off with cinnamon, which provides a hint of spice. There's also a fruitiness to it, which comes off smelling like a dark red plum note. And this just makes it uh, lean into the gourmand territory. It's perfectly blended with a velvety smooth yet dark luxurious quality and if this fragrance was a colour it would definitely be the darkest plum red. It's got a, a mellow nighttime feel to it and I think it bears a slight similarity to Jazz Club by Maze and Margiela but I'd say this is a, a touch sweeter and maybe more fruity with a, a little bit less smokiness. The Perfume Parlour have done an absolute cracking job at replicating side effect and this performs like a total beast. Just a couple of sprays of this is all you're ever going to need uh, to, to get you through a full day and it, it's one that absolutely never fails to get me noticed and complimented. But if you are into your sweet fragrances then I would say stay away from this one because it is uh, pretty much uh, about as sweet as it gets. Okay, next up is another one that's uh, featured in many of my perfume parlor videos and it's been one of my mainstay fragrances for the past three years or so and this one is called Flamed and the perfume parlor code on this is 0731. This is inspired by Fanyol Flames from Nishane which contains a prominent note of coconut and it's supported by a boozy rum accord. But it's not a tropical fruity coconut though like what you'd get in Le Beau by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Uh, this is a coconut laced with a, a dry boozy liqueur so it's kind of similar to smelling a glass full of Malibu. There's also tobacco and tonka beans in the heart of the fragrance so you will pick up on a, a bit of smokiness and some sweetness but again this is counterbalanced by the woody cedar in the base and some oak moss which adds a touch more dry earthiness to the background and I'd say this is just simply blended to perfection. It's not too sweet, it's not too dry and it just smells really sophisticated and expensive. It's very unique and interesting and I don't have any other fragrance in my collection that I can say this one even reminds me of uh, and it's definitely one of them fragrances that people always ask you what you're wearing. I absolutely love this one and the perfume parlor have done a well and truly uh, cracking job and they've nailed the accuracy of this one apart from maybe the first 10 minutes when the alcohol is just wearing off but apart from that I can't tell any difference between this and the original. I'd say it's perfect for the uh, cooler months during maybe the spring and the autumn uh, and I think it works well as a really classy smelling office fragrance rather than one that I'd wear for a night out uh, but I love how this one smells so definitely give this one a go and uh, tell me what you think. Okay, so we are definitely flying through the list now and the 14th recommendation that I'm going to talk about today is called Verdant and the perfume palette code on this one is 0533. This one is a copy of Greenly from Parfums de Marley, uh, which is a citrus aromatic fragrance. So if you enjoy your fresh green scents, then this is definitely the one for you. It's a modern smelling Chypre fragrance, which opens up with tart green apple, juicy mandarin orange and zingy bergamot. And instantly you can almost smell the summertime. It's fresh, green and invigorating. And it's one of them fragrances that can just instantly lift your mood and just make you feel upbeat. In the heart of the fragrance there's violet, cashmere and pettigrew and cedar and pomeroles and the base is made up of amber wood, oak moss and musk so basically all natural earthy notes and this fragrance does make you think of being outdoors in the countryside just walking across the sprawling green grassy hills. 
It's in the similar genre to Creed's Green Irish Tweed and Polo Green from Ralph Lauren, but this is a bit more subtle and modern smelling than those two, and perhaps a little bit more safe and office friendly. This is a really clean, safe and inoffensive fragrance that's perfect for the spring and summertime. Uh, it's very gentlemanly and it just oozes class, so definitely one to uh, add to your next perfume parlour order. Okay, this next one is one of my all-time favourites and it would be one of my first recommendations to anybody that's just buying their first fragrance from the perfume parlour. This one is called Saintly S and the perfume parlour code on this is 1804. This is a copy of Angel's Chair by Killian and for me it's the most accurate recreation that I've come across of this particular fragrance and I've now probably tested about 10 different clones of Angel's Chair. It opens up with a boozy cognac note and lots of oak woodiness and at first it's like smelling the inside of a distillery but it's not long before the sweet notes of praline, tonka beans and vanilla come through along with the cinnamon and for the most part you get a delicious almost gourmand uh, warm spiced fruit pie type aroma. The vanilla and the praline uh, bring a really smooth creaminess to the base of the fragrance and the cinnamon is always a note that kind of makes me think of the festive season so this is one of my go-to scents around this time of year. It's still maybe not quite as good as the original in my opinion and there's just a, a bit more clarity and separation of each individual note in the OG version uh, but this is still an absolutely brilliant copy and it's one you should definitely get your nose on in 2023. Right so next up is one that goes by the name of Great Evening and the perfume palette code on this one is 1602. This is a copy of Grand Soir from Mason Francis Kirk Jan, uh, which is an amber vanilla fragrance that opens up very spicy smelling with a resinous ambery note. The vanilla adds a hint of sweetness, but this is not what, really what I'd describe as a, uh, a full on sweet smelling scent. It's almost as spicy as Spice Bomb Extreme when you first spray it, uh, but it does transform quite quickly into like a rich balsamic semi-sweet amber and vanilla fragrance uh, once it's all dried down. This is very likeable and it's not going to challenge your senses like some other niche fragrances do uh, but it's got enough character for people to know that you're wearing something uh, a little bit special and expensive. This is an autumn and winter fragrance with lots of festive spice and classy ambery uh, touches in the background. It has uh, great projection and longevity and it's maybe a touch too potent after the first spray uh, but just let it calm down a little bit and uh, you will get probably about eight to, eight to nine hours out of this one on your skin. This is one that I'd uh, strongly recommend that you try out for yourselves and uh, I can't guarantee that everyone will love it uh, but it's one that I really like and I think more people will like this than, uh, than disliking it. Okay so this next one is about as fresh and mass appealing as you're ever likely to find and this one is called Panthera and um, the perfume parlour code on this one is 1611. This is a copy of Tiger by Bulgari which is a simple three note citrus aromatic fragrance with a sparkling zesty grapefruit opening followed by a clean woody dry down. Uh, there's also ambroxin in the base so you do get a bit of an aquatic salty vibe in there also. It's a super fresh and clean fragrance that gets the job done on the hottest of summer days and unlike the majority of fresh fragrances this lasts and lasts for hours and it just cuts through the air like a knife. However the original will set you back £300 a bottle which I think is crazy for a, a fresh fragrance. I paid just £14 for this 30ml uh, perfume parlour version so it's a, a bit of a no brainer for the summertime. but don't expect anything unique, um, I would, it's just a very simple and no nonsense linear fragrance that does exactly what it's supposed to do and it just keeps you smelling super fresh for hours and uh, uh, it is my kind of go to scent on the hottest days of the summer and uh, I can't wait to uh, break this one out again in 2023. Okay, so we've just got three to go now, so we better make these three uh, pretty special ones. And this next one is one of my all-time favourite fragrances for the autumn and winter seasons. This one goes by the name of Noir Illusion, and the perfume parlour code on this one is 1746. This is a copy of Killian's Black Phantom, which is a stunning blend of coffee, chocolate and boozy nuances. It's sweet and luxurious and it's perfect for the cold winter months. It's classy, sexy and masculine 
with a really intoxicating character that makes you just want to keep catching wafts of it or going in for another sniff. This perfume parlour copy smells virtually identical to the original, I've tested them side by side loads of times and there's nothing between them. It has a really good performance but I'd uh, go for the extract spray over the EDP because it does seem to be a touch smoother in the opening with a, a higher concentration of fragrance oil. So if you are into your uh, sweet gourmand fragrances, this is about as good as it gets. It's an absolute stunner and uh, one of my highest recommendations from the perfume parlour. Okay, so the penultimate one in this year's rundown is called Wood Citrus Leaf and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1921. This is a copy of Oud Lemon Mint from Mansera, uh, which incidentally doesn't smell like lemon or mint, so God knows where the, uh, they got the name from. Uh, but it does start out quite fresh and quite bright and citrusy with a bit of a peppery kick. But there's also a clean soapiness in the opening also. It's not long before the heart and the bass notes come through and it transforms into a beautifully easy going fragrance with a really mellow character. There's almond and vanilla in here so you might pick up on a bit of a similar kind of vibe to Galan Lom EDL Cologne uh, if you've ever tried that one. Uh, but what you get from this for the most part is a really high class soapy clean smell that's super versatile and likeable. There's earthy notes like vetiver, patchouli and oud listed in the note breakdown but I don't really pick up on those at all and for me it's the softer notes like jasmine, the almond and the musk that are the most prominent for me when I smell this one. This smells like you've uh, taken a long hot bath and just treated yourself to some really expensive bath oils. It's a really clean and comforting scent that I'd be more likely or inclined to wear at home when I'm just relaxing in front of the TV rather than to wear it like for a boozy night out with the boys. Uh, but sometimes it's just nice to wear something that just smells really clean and chilled out. This is definitely a winner from the perfume parlour and one that I'd highly recommend if you're just looking for uh, an everyday type of fragrance. It's uh, definitely a winner and uh, one I'd recommend you try out for yourself in 2023. And last but not least, the final one in this year's top 20 is one that I've pretty much worn exclusively throughout this festive season. And I can't ever see it not featured in one of my top 20 perfume parlor videos. This one is called Pennine and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1008. This is a copy of Carlisle from Parfums de Mali, which is a warm, rich and comforting scent with a mild smokiness in the background. It's another truly beautiful cold weather scent, which opens up with a sweet spiced apple accord and dries down to a smooth brushed leather and tobacco combo, which uh, gives off a luxurious and seductive crowd pleasing sillage. It's a really addictive fragrance and it's one of them scents that you just want to keep smelling for yourself on and on every two minutes. Uh, it's really masculine without being overpowering and it's just a really classy, sexy gentleman's fragrance that smells expensive and sophisticated. This perfume parlor version is literally smack on in terms of accuracy and honestly I wouldn't be able to tell them apart if I was to blind, uh, blind test them side by side. The performance is great too and it projects really well for the first couple of hours and you'll still be able to detect it a good eight, eight or so hours later. I would definitely say grab a bottle of this one before the winter time ends because it's an absolute beauty. Yeah, so once again, that's about it for this year's top 20 inspired by fragrances from the perfume parlor. And like I said in the intro, it's extremely difficult to decide what to include when you've got so many great smelling scents. And this year, I've not even included ones like Leighton from Parfums de Mali or Tom Ford's Oud Wood or any Chanel copies for that matter. Everyone has their own Voyager discovery when they set out on the fragrance journey and I hope there's been at least one or two in today's list that's inspired you to maybe try out for yourself. But if not, I have got a, a pretty extensive back catalogue of perfume parlour reviews now which are all available in a dedicated playlist on the home page of my channel so don't forget to check those out whenever you've got a, a few minutes of uh, spare time. I'll also be back, uh, be back really soon with another brand new Perfume Parlour haul video with some really excited new pickups to tell you about, so keep a lookout for that one over the next week or so. 
and as always guys if you have found this video useful please don't forget to uh, give it a cheeky thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel it's also great to hear all your opinions and your thoughts and your critiques and all of the fragrances that feature in these perfume parlor videos so keep your comments coming down in the comments section and uh, if you've uh, got any perfume parlor recommendations that, that you'd like me to uh, feature in any future hauls uh, please let me know again down in the comments section so once again thank you very much for tuning into this episode stay safe keep smelling fresh and i'll see you very soon for another one and plenty more in 2023. Bye-bye for now.